In this wildly unscripted video, I will teach you how to make graphene from start to finish in Blender. We're going to start off by deleting this default cube and then adding in a plane. Scale that by about five times and then tab into edit mode. Right click and subdivide. I tend to use Shift R a few times just to get the number of subdivisions that I want. So that you have an easier sense of what I'm doing here, we're going to come in object properties down to viewport display and turn on wireframe. You can see I've got a nice grid. I'm going to hit 7 on the number pad and go into a top view. And now I will make sure that I actually have a specific add on. So I'll come to preferences, add ons, and I will make sure that I have the tissue add on installed. Perfect. Once I've done that, I will select my mesh and with F3 or search, I will choose convert to dual mesh, which you can see is already there. You will not see this if you do not have tissue installed or added on, so make sure you've got tissue. Once you do, hit enter, and now you can see I've got all of these wonderful little hexagons, exactly what I was looking for. So I will tab again, A to select everything, R, Z, and 45 degrees, so that I rotate that. Now, all of these are stretched, but I can fix that by just taking the scale, limiting it to the Y direction, and then entering in 0.6. And I have found that that gives pretty much the perfect hexagon that I'm looking for there. With face select mode, I can then select whatever I want. So I could choose the center one and hit control plus and just keep hitting plus to get this kind of selection. If I wanted to, I could drag out a box or if I want to still, I could use C and then with my mouse wheel, scroll up a little bit and kind of grab out whatever abstract selection that I was looking for. In this case, what I'm going to do is grab that center one and again, control plus a few times. I will then hit control I to invert the selection X and delete the faces. Now we'll tab back into object mode and we'll turn off the wireframe. In this case, we'll actually go to modifier properties and we'll come down and we'll add a wireframe modifier. You'll notice that the wireframe looks pretty big at this point, And that's because when we scaled up, we didn't actually tell Blender that we had scaled it. So we will hit control A and we'll apply the scale. That's going to shrink down to a nicer, smaller wireframe. If I wanted, I could make this thicker or thinner just using this toggle here. We'll keep it at the generic 0.02. It's very important when you do this to come down here and actually turn on boundary. That'll give you this nice edge that you're looking for. Finally, I want this to be a little bit smoother. And so I'm going to add in a bevel modifier. Don't add subdivision surface, that will not work right out of the box. Uh, bevel is just usually going to give you a cleaner result. So right away you can see this is smoothed out a little bit. I'm going to actually add two segments and then right click and shade smooth. If I zoom in, you can see there are these little overhangs and that's because this is a bevel offset of 0.1 meters on a wireframe that's 0.02 meters. That's way too big for the bevel. So in this case, I actually know that 0.005 is going to give me exactly what I want. If I make the wireframe thicker, I'll also have to adjust the bevel. But this is actually the look that I was going for. Now, this is fine, but it's not necessarily the most interesting graphene in the world. If I wanted to, I could make a stack by adding in an array modifier, changing that offset to 1 or 10, and then building up a few layers. That would be fine. But what I actually want to do here is just add a little visual interest by making the graphene wave a bit. And I'm going to do that with a displacement modifier. Now, this is the wrong place in the modifier stack. The displacement needs to be above the wireframe and the bevel. Then I will add a new texture, come down to the texture properties tab, add in a clouds modifier, and bring this size up to about two and a half. You could make it anything you want. If you are actually using a scroll feature here, note that Blender will not actually really want to scroll above two unless you've already typed in a value higher than that. So I'm happy with this look. And if I want to, I could actually make that effect greater or lesser by just changing the strength in the modifier tab. We'll keep it at one. This is fine. And now I could set up my scene and render from here, but I'd like to actually have atoms on each of these segments in the graphene. And we're gonna do that using a particle system. So shift A and let's add in a UV sphere. I will add in a subdivision surface of one just to get it smooth and shade smooth. And then I'll grab it and move it out of the way. So the nice thing about this approach is because we're using modifiers, bevel and wireframe, you can see we've got quite a bit of geometry in the scene in terms of vertices, 
but when we actually tap into edit mode, the number of vertices that we have for this specific set of graphene and for any graphene that we make in this way will be equal to whatever number you see down here. In this case, 1,536. So let's go to the particle properties tab, add in a particle system, we'll use hair, so it will stay in place, and we'll enter that number, 1,536. For source, we will select vertices, we'll tell it to use the modifier stack, and we won't use random order. We'll then go to the render tab, and we'll, instead of path, use object. Which object? The sphere that we just put in. So if we tabbed out of edit mode right now, you can see the spheres are all over the place, and they're way too big. You could actually adjust the scale here by changing the scale of our sphere over there, but the way that I'm going to do it is by changing it here. This way, if I had multiple systems that use that same sphere, I could have them all be different sizes, not depending on the actual sphere itself. The other thing that you'll notice is these are all overlapped. Now, I told the particle system to use the modifier stack, and right now it's at the bottom. So it is adding in particles over top of the wireframe and the bevel. If I don't want to do that, I can very simply move this so that it is under the displacement and follows the displacement, but above the wireframe and the bevel. And now I have exactly the way I want it, my graphene with my atoms, just like that. And we'll go into materials preview and we'll very quickly come down to the materials tab with our sphere selected and we'll add in a metallic material, something shiny, uh, let's say gold. I like gold. We will use studio lighting for this. There we go, very nice. And uh, we'll also make the background transparent. Great. We can also add in something for our graphene. We'll select this, we'll go to materials, we'll add in a new one, in this case, black. Also metallic, also shiny. Awesome. So at this stage, this is pretty good. We've got our graphene the way we want it. We could actually change it a little bit if we want. We can take the wireframe and we can so choose uh, replace original, in which case we would actually have all the original faces. We could turn the particle system on or off, and so we could have graphene that looked like this, we could have graphene that looked like this, we can have graphene that looks like this, all kinds of options. And that's fine. Now, if you wanted to work with something, say, not graphene, you want boron nitride, you need atoms at specific points on this lattice or just every other point, there's a very convenient way to do this, and it's again using the same approach. So we'll select our mesh, tab into edit mode. And now up here in selection, we will choose checker deselect. You can see that is half the vertices, and now we have every other vertice selected, or a total of 768 vertices. We'll now come down to this little tab here, Object Data Properties, and we'll add in a vertex group. I'll call this Atom A, and hit Assign. So all the vertices that are selected are now in this group. If I hit Control I, it selects all the other vertices, and I'll make a different group called Atom B, and I'll assign those. Now, just to clean this up a little bit in the scene, we'll come up here and we'll name this Graphene Sheet. We'll name the first sphere Atom A. We'll tab out of edit mode, and then we'll just move away from our camera for a second, grab this sphere here, Shift D to duplicate it, and we'll call this one Atom B. Perfect. And just to make it a little bit more distinct, we'll give it its own material, we'll unlink that, and we will say this one can be red. Awesome. Let's go back to the camera. So, now we have our particle system. And you can see from the number that we selected, we now only need 768 vertices. So we'll drop that number down. We can see that they're kind of all over the place and not where we want, but in the particle system options, if we come down to vertex groups. For density, we can choose the group that we made, atom A. So now they're all in exactly that spacing that we wanted. To get the other ones, all we have to do is add another particle system. Same deal as last time, hair, 768 vertices, emitting from the vertex, modifier stack, random order, we don't want that. And again, we'll come back to the modifier tab and we'll move this particle system above the wireframe and the bevel as well. We'll also change this to render object. And in this case, the object we'll select is atom B. 
We'll change the scale, drop it down to 0.01 in this case, and again we will come down to density, and this time we'll choose atom B. And now you can see, just like that, we have this perfectly alternating lattice, call it boron nitride, call it fancy graphene, whatever you want. All the same things apply as before. We can change this with the wireframe modifier, replace original. Uh, we can get rid of both of the particle systems. We could have one of them appear. We could make it so that they don't appear in the renders either. All the options, this is a very flexible way to make this specific and very, very common science motif. As always, thanks for coming out. If this was at all helpful to you, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, have yourself a great old day.